Hey guys, welcome to Call to Arms. My name is Matt Pazlaski and I bring you Chainmail Part 2. What we'll be going over this video is how to make these. Uh, and how to make your rings for them and everything like that. And how to do that. This is my old, old uh, jig rod. 7 eighths of an inch. And the rings were too big for this. And so I'm moving down to historically accurate... Um, five sixteenths. I uh, can't do quarter inch as I was asking you guys to say whether or not between quarter inch and five sixteenths I was on the fence about one of them and the rings are too small and you can't quite fit it together it doesn't quite close up right with my 14 gauge steel electric fence wire. Um, so I'm using the five sixteenths which is actually still historically accurate um, for it um, but the difference is, is mine's rounded it's not flat or uh, like triangular so that's the only downside what it means is like my wire is actually has like if you were to cut it and it actually has like a roundness to it it's not like flat wire so yeah this is uh this is what we're using is 5 16 inch 5 16 of an inch right now and I'll show you guys how to uh, do coils and cut it and everything like that I'm still using my phone so I apologize in advance for any technical difficulties that occur yeah, let's get to it. Okay, so here you have my steel electric fence wire. Um, it's 14 gauge. You can use 16 uh, selections of wire. You can use you can use uh, 16 gauge steel electric fence wire um, for historical authenticity and for reenactments and everything like that. I like uh, 14 or 16. For reenactments. Uh, if you want to hang it on the wall just for a piece of decoration, I would suggest using anything of lower. But the thinner the wire, the thinner it looks and everything like that. And I don't know. 14, 16, don't go smaller than 20, I would recommend. I've never done that, but this is kind of what I would say. Um, what you'll need in this video is, of course, steel wire, your jig. Uh, this is just two blocks of wood with holes drilled in it for my rods to rotate freely in. Or some more than others. Um, you got your five sixteenths rod stuck in the stuck in the front. My spool with the rod in the back. I forgot what dimensions this is. It doesn't really matter. Um, you'll need your bolt cutters. You'll need a pair of wire cutters. Never hurt. Um, steel nose or needle nose pliers. Your leather glove, left or right, depends on what handed you're on and which way you're doing it. You'll see. Your uh, Electric drill, hand drill, or if you have a hand crank for it, if you want to do it like that, you can do that. Um, I've seen guys do it that way. But what we're pretty much doing is making these rings. I gotta sneeze. Hold up. If I sneeze, sorry. Um, so yeah, I'm actually gonna go over how to make your four and one, six and one, or eight and one. You can look at uh, the four and one in my previous video, Chainmail Part One, at Call to Arms. And you can follow me on Twitter or subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. If you do. Uh, comments, please leave in the box below. So, kind of clear off the work area. And what you're going to want to do is, you have your pre-drilled hole. And you'll have to fit your steel wire through. As you can see here, you have your pre-drilled hole. And what you're going to do is, you're just going to stick your wire through and spin it and make a coil. Sure you guys have to do that. Uh, I like to kind of leave a little bend in it while I'm getting situated. We are ready for spinning wire. Now with this setup, I like to go counterclockwise. You can go either way; it doesn't really matter. And Start slow first. Now what you want to, I'm pushing my hand down to keep it tight. So that way that it makes a tight ring on the rod. And kind of keeps it going smoothly. If you let it just kind of go. It kind of doesn't quite work. It makes a little mess. And so keep it tight. Get a 
nice spool like this. And you'll um, just have to cut this with wire and everything like that and go. Um, and everything like that. So what we'll do is, is uh, I'll try and bring this down as long as I can, this rod, and I'll try and do a mess up for you guys right here so you guys can see this. Hopefully I can get it. I tried earlier today to get one to show you guys why I messed up. I could not do it for the life of me. I like to go slow, I'm going kind of fast to try and force myself to mess up, but I can't. And it seems when I want to mess up, I can't, but when I don't want to mess up, I do. And you'll see what I'm talking about messing up the wire will feed back on it and make a mess. Okay, so I'm just going to purposely pull it back, and I'll show you guys what to do. Now, when you have this, you can do one or two things. You can either cut it and leave it there like that, just to not waste any wire going back, or you can kind of just go back over and kind of continue. I got lucky with it and actually got a pretty tight coil like this, so I'm going to try and do is finish this bad boy out and show you guys how to make rings. Sometimes you have to move this down by yourself, or sometimes I'll just follow with you. Okay, so while I still have some room left, I'll try and get that up. Um, what you'll have is um, whiplash when you cut this, if it's still on your chuck, or if not, I don't know what that is. Uh, I'll actually take it out. that so it's free right now and it shouldn't spin back on me if it does you can get a nasty little cut like this it came back and actually hit me in the hand today and it hurt pretty bad it does not feel good so let's hold on to both okay that doesn't want to go back but this does so all I like to do is just simply put it in the hole try to keep it tight now what I'm going to do is just going to finish this out right here, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to cut this off so it doesn't scratch up my jig. I would suggest wearing safety glasses while cutting some of this, sometimes it'll fly up and it could hit you in the eye or something like that. Just a little suggestion. So let's finish this guy up. Oh, spin it the right way helps. Ah! Although you still can get hurt while wearing leather gloves. Okay, so what we have right here is we have our coil, and we'll just cut it out right here. You have your little loop where you stuck it in the hole. You just take your bolt cutters or your tin snips or whatever you have to use to cut wire, cut it out, and you'll end up having like extra wire and anything like that. I keep it, and I'm gonna melt it down later. I might get a hold of my uh, dad's old scalpel blades and melt those down, that's a high carbon steel. This might be a low, if I'm lucky, a low carbon steel if it doesn't have anything else besides steel. So I'm gonna pause the video, get it uh, my camera situated and show you guys how to cut the steel wires. And if I can get this out. Okay, it'll work this way. And what you do is you just kinda Slide it off. You get, it's kind of like a spring. You just have your coil of spring. This is where we started. Got a little loose here. So I showed you when you're not keeping it tight. Keeping it tight, keeping it tight. And then I brought it back here intentionally on purpose and then kept it tight. And I was actually able to get a really tight pattern. I got lucky. Most times I don't get that. So I'll show you guys how to cut rings next. Okay, guys, let's see if this is uh, working or not right now. Let's hope it is. Uh, where's my bolt cutters? Oh, they're over here. 
Okay. So I got my bolt cutters. You'll be needing these. Um, now what you have here, this is the one we just spun. I spun a few more today. As you can see, I've spun quite a few today, and this is the low end. I've spun actually like five or six more of these. So yeah, um, I'll show you guys what I've been working on lately too. I wasn't supposed to be doing it during finals week, but uh, I got a new wire and I just had to sneak it in. So here you have here, what I like to do is personally cut off the tabs. Let's cut it off here. And you get your wire. I'll see, I can still use this spool, this end I'll still cut off. And what you can do is just kind of, if it wants to. Okay, and this will just simply go in my uh, smelting pot. And this is a nice little coil we have here. And cut off the other tab. Okay, so you guys might be wondering, how in the world am I going to get this off? I can't really pull it apart, but I'll do my best to try and cut this off right here. What you can do is you can bend it to expose this wire. And try and get your snips in. Ow. Okay, so you see this ring's kind of disformed and everything like that. I'm going to cut that off just to be done with it. I'm not even going to try and fix it. Ooh. Hold up, let me fix it. Okay, so... Now we still have this problem here. If I can find it. We have that coil right there, and what we're going to do is just simply find out where the coil started and cut it off. If I can cut it off. Okay, I cut through. Now, what you gotta do is just pull it off, and it's good. Now we, we almost cut through and made another ring. Now, what you want to do with this is just cut this ring. So don't let me get up a little closer. And just throw it in your little box. I I just keep a little note card box and do it that way. And do is just let's see here or right here. As you can see you just cut it off one by one. One at a time. You cut your rings. And it takes quite a while, but it's rewarding in the end to make uh your own coat of mail and you can say, I didn't buy it, I made it myself. That's what I like about it. I made all the mail by myself. And one suggestion too, if you have uh, spring assisted bolt cutters, they kind of like spring up a little bit. Mine are not, they're 12 inches. Um, so yeah, uh, I just kind of cut it one at a time. And I actually have quite a few rings made up from just cutting them today. More for the scrap. I actually have quite a few rings. I have no idea how many are in here. I'd say at least 300. Now, what I've made so far with these is while I was on my probation from the ma mailing, I've made this so far. This is actually the front piece to my collar I'm going to make. Uh, I'm trying to prevent sag because I actually on my last one, it sagged down and drooped down and everything like that. I'm trying to prevent that. What I'm going to do or what I'm going to try and do is what I've seen people do is make a triangle here and a triangle here and they tied it together. I'm, there's not really any good videos on how to explain that. I'm going to try and do a better job for you guys so you guys can see a better picture. But there's two ways to make mail. As you saw in my last video, I did a long chain and tied it together. That's easier with bigger rings. See, you know, these are 5 16 These are small rings. They're hard to work with. It's just a pain. Uh, that's why I started with big rings to make it easy. So what I do is, um, what I work with is I make half of what I my uh, squares are going to be, which I tie together. And it's these, right here. Uh, these are just five rows long, and depending on how you count them, it's either five, uh, it's four to five rings wide. Just find something that you like to work with, and something you use. This is how you do it, this is how, this is how I do it, and what I actually do is I'll double it up with this. And if it's upside down, I apologize. Um, I'm kind of do a makeshift right here. Jerry Rig Central right here. Um, I'm using my phone right now and it's held up to my camera by a piece of Velcro. So yeah, um, this is what I like to do is um, hold it up like this and this is what I'll use to tie everything together. Now this will be like my uh, base pattern. 
fun and it's addicting to play with in your hands. I actually got yelled at during finals for playing with a square this big by a few classmates of mine. It was a review day, so it wasn't that big of a deal. Um, anyways, um, attire for chainmail. Um, what this is meant to do is if I have my representation here, here is a sword. Yeah, let's say this is my unprotected arm, okay? Sword slash comes in. Ah, my leg might not be cut from this. You know, this is chainmail. It will protect against a cut, but my arm could be broken. Arm. Arm could be broken. The bone could. This is uh, to protect against hack slashes and not cut you. Now, what, how they uh, did this was that they um, will wear a gambeson. And a gambeson is like a quilted shirt. Uh, I plan on getting one. They're a little bit expensive. I've actually been looking on Mark of Athena and various websites to try and find a cheap one. There's one on Mark of Athena. I really, or not Mark of Athena, that's a book I've been reading. Cult of Athena. Cultofathena.com. They have a lot of stuff. I'm going to get uh, some uh, caps for my shields. I think they're called the Boises. Uh, my camera seems to be falling here, so I'll probably be wrapping up here shortly. Uh, but here you have this uh, right here, and it'll pretty much be padding. And it'll come and it'll hit here, and see if I can fix this real quick. Anyway, ugh, that's not worse. Okay, what you have here is this is like, you'll have a padding, and it'll come in, and it'll like just cushion the blow you'll have like a bruise instead of a cut and that you know would you rather be cut or would you rather be bruised I'd rather be bruised personally now ways to come to make this obsolete uh, bopkin tip arrowheads which are just like long tri or square arrowheads that would just punch through the mail the holes in the mail and kill you that way but you're sometimes it would, the mail would take all the energy from it and the gamison would just stop it would be like Kevlar how it would stop a bullet. Now, also you have the mace, the flail, the ball and chain. You know, just devastating weapons. And they would just crush the bone inside and everything like that. And just destroy. The, it, it, it's a uh, defeat the man within, not the armor. It's avoiding that part. Axes too um, would sometimes either break bones or they could even sometimes get through the mail. So, um, let's uh, do a recap of what we did in this video. Um, I'll... Pause it here, bring it back up to my face, and go from there. Okay. Recap of what we did today. What we did today is we uh, went over uh, what kind of rods to use and everything like that for starters. We went over how to make coils, and then how to make your, your rings. These are 5 sixteenths. I will grab another ring, show you guys here. Okay. So we have these. Um, we went over my new project, which is 5 sixteenths rings. Um, I will be hopefully be doing another video with a better camera. No promises. Um, but this will tie in, just go across. It'll tie in here with uh, triangles. You know, it should work, hopefully. How, how it should look is... See, when I hold it up like this, you can kind of see through it. You can kind of see... A little bit better. Um, see how this is a little bit longer, it's harder to show you, so I'll switch to this. Now, this hangs down a lot more than this does. Like, even if I hold it out here, you can see it. Maybe this will be a little bit better. I'll kind of fade in and out. This kind of, you can see it falling together and condensing more than it is at the top. Now, what you want it to do is just sort of lay all tight and nice like that. Um, this is addicting to play with in your hands, by the way. Um, uh, we went over my project, but I'll be uh, releasing my next videos. Um, it will be a while to get blacksmithing ones, because of it's going to cost a pretty penny or two to uh, get everything I need, and all my tools and stuff like that. I have my anvil, I got that from my grandfather, or my papa, uh, what we call in our family. Or Yeah, um, maybe a charcoal video or two, up in the coming week. Uh, I have a friend that wants me to show him how to do it, I know how to do that. Um... Okay, um, so subscribe to my channel, uh, follow me on Twitter, I'll try and keep that updated a little bit better, I've been slacking, seeing how it's been finals, um, so subscribe to my channel if you like it, like my video, leave your comments in the box below, um, so yeah, um, we went over what wire to pick, and hope you guys like my video, leave any comments below, thank you.